We have a very big announcement to make here at a home study. We've decided that uh, you were all, well a lot of you were right. We are not up to the job of uh, doing dairy animals or really animals at all. So we're going to stop producing, we're going to stop with all animals completely, get rid of all the livestock on the farm. Uh, we're going to get rid of the chickens, the cows, the, the goats, because we've realized Despite enjoying that, we're really good at producing one thing more than all these animals, the milk, all that stuff. Um, the, the thing we produce best is mud. So from now on, this channel, we want to focus on the organic, free-range production of mud. We don't want to do CAFO mud. We don't want to raise our GMO mud. This is going to be a GMO-free, organically raised mud. We probably won't get official organic status because uh, going through the testing to become an actual organic mud farm is very expensive and we found that the customer base doesn't really support that. But we're going to be like, beyond organic mud farm because uh, this mud is produced all natural, just like the way nature intended mud to be produced. We're drowning in mud, everybody. Are you, is this time of year, like, it's supposed to be snowing, but it's raining and it's just mud. And we have to address this problem. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the mud problem and, and what we plan to do with the mud. Does your paddocks look like this right now? You're not alone. This has been a record wet year for Pennsylvania. This is not good. This kind of mud is really bad for animals. They can injure their feet in this mud, uh, either by like stepping and, and breaking a leg, or even getting too much mud in their feet, in their hoofs. We've seen goats develop like walking issues because of the muds, uh, the cows, it can be bad for their hoofs. We can't have this kind of mud. And unfortunately, where our barn is located, it's in a very muddy spot. We are at the foot of a hill. We're at the lowest point on the property. This was not always a problem. You see, my in-laws, they built this barn. They didn't have large livestock. Uh, they didn't plan on having cows or goats. My mother-in-law raised chickens all these years. And chickens, they don't need, I mean, a puddle's not a big deal for a chicken. And the ducks, forget about it. The ducks are out here loving life. They're swimming in the puddles. But it's not good for the cows. It's not good for the goats. Right now, because of this issue, uh, we gotta keep, I mean, look, Luna's inside. Right now we have Luna inside because if she's out on these pastures, she's gonna ruin it. Ladybug is out because she can go out into the big pasture. There's not a lot of snow and there's enough space there. She can't ruin too much. But this is just, it's, yeah, it's not good. factors to our mud problem this year and we intend to address all three of those factors the first one you'll see behind me the barn does not have gutters when building a barn some people choose not to do gutters because it's an added chore to take care of cleaning gutters back at squash hollow when we built our barn we didn't put gutters on it because we didn't want to maintain it we did the large overhang like you see on this barn and uh, that takes the water away from the barn itself and out into the paddock which if you have well draining ground here and just a bunch of chickens, it's not a big deal. But you can see the lack of gutters, all this water is dripping right down on the side of the barn, soaking into the ground here. The ground here has reached its maximum water capacity. We're gonna look into putting gutters on this barn. That'll take all this water here, get rid of that problem. But that is probably the smallest factor in this whole big problem. The next problem is 
the fact that we are in the lowest spot on the property, all the water comes off the hill. Let's go see that. The next, like, main contributing factor... <laughs> Guineas are gonna ruin this guy. We'll just let the guineas go by, they're too noisy. Go ahead. So the next major contributing factor to the water problem, probably the number one reason why we have such a water problem here, is... Yeah, get out of here. The next biggest contributing factor to the water problem here is the location. As you can see, there's a huge hillside to the side of our barn, and all the water landing on this hillside is coming down the hill. Some of it is getting stopped by the vegetation and the grass that's up there, but not all of it. And so it comes down, especially in a heavy rain, it comes down, surface water comes down, and even groundwater comes through. You can see that at the foot of the hill, even after, long after the rain is done, water seeps out of the ground. And it comes right here. You can see this big old puddle that is the low spot on the property, right here, where the barn was built in the lowest spot. So the water has come flooding down and then it hits the barn and it just stays there. So now we just have a huge puddle. Again, part of the problem here is the gutters, but another major factor is the water coming down the hill. We really can't stop water coming down the hill. We could build a swale at the foot here to catch that water. Can't even see me because there's so much rain on the lens. Let me clean this off. At the bottom of the hill, if the barn were just a little bit further that way, we could build like a trench or a swale to catch that water and carry it around the barn. Unfortunately, it's a little late for that. The fencing's already up, the barn's already here. We can't do that. So the next best thing we can do to catch a lot of this water and take it away is put in some drainage. We refer to them as curtain drains. That's what I used to install all the time when I worked as an excavator with my father's company. Uh, so you might know them as French drains. Basically a curtain drain or a French drain is just a bunch of gravel with some perforated pipe running through it. You put it at your low spot so the water coming down the hill and through the ground hits the pipe. Water will always follow the path of least resistance, get in that pipe, and then you run that pipe away from your buildings and your pastures. So if we ran a nice big curtain drain here and then down past the back, kind of put like a uh, C around the building. That's guineas. They like to dry off on the gate. Ain't gonna happen today, guys. You ain't getting dried off. So if we were to run a curtain or a French drain down the side of the barn here and then turn and go that way, that would absorb a ton of the water coming down the hill and in the ground, and then we could run it right over the far edge, drop it down below into like a retention pond, something that would stop the energy of the water, slow it down and let it go into the ground, which is always what you wanna do with water. You wanna to try to slow it down and get it back in the ground. That is solution number two, so some drainage. Now the final problem with this, well, let's go take a look at her. The final problem that we're facing here with drainage and water is standing right there. Large livestock like ladybug, they turn the surface of your paddocks, the surface of the area around your barn, they poop on it, they break up the vegetation and kill it. When you kill the vegetation, it's no longer absorbing moisture into the roots, poop, added to the dirt creates like more of a sludge layer and it will take the dirt on top of your paddocks or the earth on top of the paddocks and it will saturate it causing it no longer to absorb and it just will hold water on the surface. 
we're not gonna get rid of our livestock. That's the whole point to having livestock. The only reason we need a dry paddock is because we wanna have livestock. So what can we do for that? Well, we can address the surface, what our livestock is on. Winter, early spring, rainy times of the year, you need to have what is called a sacrifice pen or a sacrifice lot. An area where you keep your livestock that is gonna be destroyed. There's not gonna be any vegetation, but it's built for that. So what can you use for a sacrifice lot? What can you put down so that your cow can be there and not be destroying and causing a mess? Well, first you have to remove all the vegetation, all the topsoil and organic matter and sludge. You get it down to a sub layer that is well draining and more solid. Then you put geotextile fabric down. That geotextile fabric, uh, preferably a non-woven fabric, it allows water to go through it, but it will not allow what you put on top of that, which is gravel, larger gravel, and then a finer layer of gravel. Uh, you put that on top of the geotextile fabric. The fabric keeps the gravel from sinking down into the dirt and disappearing, keeps it nice and up. You have heavy chunks of gravel in the first layer, and then you have finer bits because you don't want your cattle walking over big, heavy chunks of gravel. Plus, finer bits are better at keeping the poop and stuff out. Now, you do have to clear the top of that. You can't just let the cow poop on it because what does poop do to gravel? Well, enough poop would turn gravel into like this again. But it would be a small space that we could stay on top of and make sure is cleared and it would be much better draining than what's already here, especially if that ran into those curtain drains or French drains and took the water right out. So those are three problems and three possible solutions. What are we gonna do this year? That depends. Let's go inside so my camera doesn't get destroyed by any more rain and talk about what are our plans, what are we gonna look into here for a solution to this mud problem. <laughs> The honest answer is I don't yet know. Three problems, three solutions. And while I didn't kind of mention it in those three problems, another problem is just the general um, slope in the paddocks is not downward and out. You always want your paddocks to slope away from the barn and away so the water is carried away. Again, the barn is built in the very lowest possible spot on the property. So the water does not drain away from the barn. So that kind of fourth problem, we mentioned it in it being at the bottom of the hill, but we could address that while doing, uh, removing the soil, putting geotextile fabric and gravel, then we could regrade so that everything was sloping away from the barn. What are we going to do? Right now what I'm doing, I'm out here, I'm measuring the area that we would have to put drains, getting a price on gutters, I'm getting a price on materials to put drains, to put geotextile fabric, and to put gravel. I'm going to get a figure together and look at all three projects, price them out, see what we can afford for this year. We probably can't afford to do all three fixes. And if you know anything from us, probably our older videos and maybe even our podcasts, uh, we don't like going into debt for things. We will not be going into debt for any of these problems. Just pay for our materials, pay for our equipment rentals, pay for the help, and be done with it. So we will address the problems in whatever way we can afford to this winter. And in future videos, we'll show you how we've priced it out, what the potential costs are, and we'll tell you what we're gonna do to fix it. A decade of homesteading has taught us you're never going to fix all the problems. No matter how much money you throw at it, no matter how much time and energy, tomorrow there'll be a new problem. It's one of the fun parts of homesteading if you learn to enjoy problem solving. So instead of going into debt and spending a ton of money and all that other stuff to fix it all at once, what we'll do is kind of a cost versus reward analysis. Say, okay, we're getting the most water from this. If we fix this one problem, how much will we benefit from it? Can we afford to do two fixes? What about three? We'll figure out what the best solution is and we'll update you from there. Same thing if you have problems on your homestead like this one, it's never wrong to come up with a game plan how to solve every problem and then practically approach it and say, what can you actually afford to do this year? What can you do that will do the best bang for its buck? So comment below if you've had any experience with drainage issues like we have. We're not gonna move the barn. I know, don't comment below like you built the barn in the wrong place. Here's the barn, it is where it is. We gotta fix this problem. It's fixable, we just have to fix it. So tell us 
What have you done on your properties to address drainage solutions? Where did you find the best bang for the buck? I'd love to hear in the comments below as we make this decision. It will help to find out what worked best for others. Eventually, all three of those solutions will be here on the barn. We'll just have to see whether or not that's this year's projects or maybe into next year. All right, I gotta take my dogs for a walk in this. Here we go. In tomorrow's episode of Home Study, we're setting up more winter water solutions. So I'll put links below to all the equipment you're gonna see in this video. We got an in stock tank heater. Trying to keep water from freezing, but unfortunately I buy the wrong piece of equipment. Well, it turns out we picked up the wrong stock heater. So we're going to have to go to... We also share a really great hack we've developed so that we can use a hose throughout the winter. Make sure to tune in tomorrow morning as soon as you wake up. If you like our show and you wanna help support this show, there are two ways you can do it. First, you can become a pioneer for $5 a month. You get bonus content, discounts on homesteading things you might already be purchasing, access to classes. You can learn all about that by clicking there or do all your Amazon shopping through www.amsteady.com. Thank you for your support.